Hey everyone, it's Nicole here today with a My Favorite Things guest designer project showcasing some of the new dies and stamps from the January 2015 My Favorite Things release. I am using some cotton candy cardstock here. I've trimmed it down to four inches by five and a quarter inches, which is just a quarter inch smaller than a standard A2 sized card. And I'm inking up the brand new damask background stamp with the cotton candy ink to create a tone on tone background. Very subtle texture here for my pink background for my card today. I'm just pressing my cardstock to my stamp and then I used a scrap piece of paper over that to press my cardstock so I got a nice stamped impression. Then I'm taking the Love Dynamics die. This is a new die for January. This is actually going to be free with a $60 purchase at My Favorite Things. And I'm going to tape that in place along the bottom third of my card and run that through my Big Shot die cutting machine. I'll pop that off there and pop out all of that extra and that's going to give me a little window which would be really cute if I wanted to do that right on the front of an A2 card. I'm actually going to create a little flat shaker with some vellum here in a little bit to place behind that. Now I have die cut the sitting girl with the dog from the Birdie Brown You Have My Heart stamp set. I use the um, Dynamics first and then stamped the image using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And she's going to be sitting right there on top of the die cut word love. I'm going to go ahead and color her in using some Copic markers. I'm using E00, E11, and E13 for her skin, as well as a little bit of R20 for her cheeks, which I'll do kind of near the end of coloring in all of her skin. If you have watched any of my coloring videos before, you probably know that I generally start with the skin and the hair and then I fill in the rest of the images from there. I always think I get a much better, oh, I don't know how to say it. I, I It leads me into what I want to do with my the rest of my coloring, I guess is what I want to say. Now, I colored her hair with um, E53, and then I actually used E13, which isn't what I meant to use. I kind of meant to use the E25, but it kind of worked out. I really kind of liked it, and so I ended up just kind of filling in there and working with my markers until I got her hair the color I wanted it to be. And then I'm going to create kind of a mint blue dress. I thought that would be really pretty with the pink cardstock and give a nice contrast to all of the pink going on in the card. So I'm using three colors of this kind of mint or teal aqua color. I started with my lightest and then I actually went in with my darkest where I kind of wanted my shadows. And then I blended it out with the mid-tone and then went back in with my lightest color. And I kept blending and blending until I got it to look exactly the way I wanted it to look. It took a little bit of work, not too bad. Again, went back in with my darker color. I felt like it blended out just a little too much. One of the best things about Copic markers is you can go over them as many times as you need to to get the desired result. Once I have her dress pretty well colored in, I did one of my favorite things and took my darkest color first and added some little dot detail here and there to her dress just to give a little texture. Not a ton, Took my mid-tone and filled in from there, and then my lightest, which really you can't see a whole lot. Then I colored in the grass along the bottom with YG25 and YG17, and I even went back in with a little bit darker green to add a little more detail as well once I got this. The G09. And that's just very, very little, just a little flick through all of those blades of grass. I felt like I needed to darken up a few areas of her hair, so I did go back in with E47, just in a few, few places, not a lot. Then I'm using E53, a little bit lighter color to color in E81 here, to color in the puppy. And then I even went back in with a little bit, went back with my E53, 
to darken up anything that lightened up too much with my lighter color. And then E47 for the nose. And even just a little bit of that E35 to darken up a few places on the puppy until I got the color exactly the way I wanted it to look. Now I have die cut a couple of pieces of vellum. You can see them, one of them laying back behind here using the Dynamics Blueprints 15 die collection, the stitched rectangle. And I've also die cut some hearts there from the You Have My Hearts Birdie Brown stamp set. I ended up only using the hanging heart. I was trying out to see what colors I liked for the hearts if I stamped them on the white cardstock. And I did like the Razzleberry, but I decided I didn't like it on the white. So instead, I took the Razzleberry and just stamped the heart right on my card background, on the card base. Created a trio of those, and then I'm going to take those same aqua markers that I used for the girl's dress and color in this hanging heart here. And I'm using kind of the same technique that I used for the dress. and creating some little dots to create some texture for the heart. So I did the little dots with the mid-tone and the darkest colors. If you get the dots a little too dark and you think the dots look a little too sharp, go back over them with either your lightest or mid-tone color and it really kind of helps blend them out a little bit. Now I'm applying some glossy accents to the hearts I stamped on the background as well as the hanging heart to give them a little bit of dimension. We'll squeeze that out and I'll cover all of these hearts and then set that aside to dry while I work on the shaker portion of the card. Glossy accents is such a great way to add some subtle dimension. Now I have cut two pieces of vellum Oh, before I do that, I am going to stamp the greeting, You're So Good for My Heart, from the You Have My Heart stamp set, right below my die cut. Now, I have die cut a bunch of these teeny tiny hearts from the Tag Builder Dynamics 3 collection out of a whole bunch of My Favorite Things cardstock and even, even some silver glitter cardstock paper and sandwiched them between two pieces of vellum. And then I stitched around those in a rectangle that won't be shown except on those two sides to hold those in place because I didn't want them to shake all the way to the top of the vellum because um, they'll get lost and you won't be able to see them. The window is only back there behind the word love. And this is a flat shaker so there isn't any added dimension and it's going to be really easy to send through the mail. The hearts are more just a little shaker, a little interest back behind the die cut word love. I'll go ahead and attach my hanging heart and the girl with some adhesive, and this card will be all finished. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing brand new stamps and dies from the My Favorite Things January 2015 release. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Please subscribe for weekly card making and stamping videos. Thanks for watching!